Hey everyone, welcome back to another web hosting video tutorial. In this video, I will show you how to fix API authentication errors that you may be running into for your WordPress website. If you are running your WordPress website on the Lightsail platform and you're using the Bitnami image for your uh, WordPress instance, and, and if you have a plugin or a theme that needs uh, authenticated APIs for functionality, then you may run into errors that are misleading a little bit. You might have all of your configuration correct on the WP admin site, but you may still get errors like the credentials are invalid or the um, API is rejecting your API keys or security keys or something to that effect. And that is misleading because in Apache, there is a configuration setting that you have to turn on. Uh, I think it's turned off by default, but you have to turn this on to allow authenticated APIs to work on your LightCell instance. Uh, REST APIs that need authentication uh, typically use the basic authorization authentication header information that's passed along the HTTPS request from your WordPress website to the API endpoint. Uh, now in Apache, the configuration, as I mentioned, is turned off, then this security information will not be passed over the HTTP headers. And therefore, the API endpoint will not be able to authenticate your uh, website. And therefore, it may be returning back an error like the credentials are invalid. Uh, Bitnami's image in LightCell also has this configuration turned off by default. So in this video, I will show you how to modify Apache's configuration to enable this uh, setting and uh, hopefully get your API errors resolved. Now, if this uh, setting does not completely fix your API errors, or you may still be getting those same kind of messages, then there may be some other problems as well. And on my website, webhostingforbeginners.net, in the blog post for this video, I will put some additional links that may help you troubleshoot your issues even further if that's the case. So without further ado, let's take a look. All right, so for this tutorial, I do need a WordPress instance. So let me go ahead and create that real quick. As I mentioned in the intro, this video tutorial really focuses on the Bitnami based uh, light cell blueprints or images. So that's what I am going to create. Now, um, if you are not using the Bitnami based WordPress uh, image, uh, maybe you're using a Plex uh, instance for your WordPress website or, or WHM cPanel for your WordPress uh, website, then uh, they may already have some way to modify or turn this configuration setting on or off. So you might just have to Google or search on the internet and see if there are similar steps for turning on the authentication uh, configuration in Apache. Um, if you are using an Nginx based uh, web server for your WordPress website, then um, the post uh, uh, that I will link to on webhostingforbeginners.net, there is a step or a configuration that shows how to turn that on for Nginx-based uh, installs. Uh, but this tutorial specifically will focus on the Bitnami-based image that uses Apache configuration. All right, so my instance is ready. So what I need to do is log into the server using SSH. So in WordPress on the LightCell or in LightCell in the dashboard area, you can use the web-based SSH terminal or you can use a locally installed SSH client like Putty or the one that I use in majority of my videos is the Bitvise SSH client. So either way, what we need to do is log into the SSH terminal, all right? And here, what we will do is open up the configuration file. Uh, so if you go to CD apps, then WordPress, and then conf. So here there are several configuration files. The configuration file that we want to edit is the httpd-app.conf file. So we will do that in VI. 
So once this file is open, we will come down to right after this line that says if version. So right after that line, we will hit the I to insert and I will copy this configuration setting. And uh, like I do with all my videos, I will, cop I will have the commands and steps on my website, webhostingforbeginners.net for the corresponding blog post for this video tutorial. So be sure to check that out and you can just copy and paste these commands from that website. So I paste this and the property or the configuration is called CGI pass auth and we want to set that to on. I'll just hit space to indent it a little bit. And then the next thing that we will add is uh, another configuration. And here this is if we have the mod underscore set and if module installed, then we will set this configuration as well. And then finally, the third item to modify in this file will be right here, right on this line, rewrite rule, uh, caret index.php. So this line, you'll have something like this at the end, S equals one. Sometimes it will be an L or something to that effect. So here we will insert uh, this line of code. Here, we will hit the I and I will paste configuration and I will add a comma at the end. So it should look like this um, right here, then a comma and then what was already there before. In this case, it's S equals one, but if there was another character like L or something like that, then just make sure you do not remove that and you just put a comma right before or right after uh, you pasted your configuration. So with that done, we will save the file and quit out of the VI editor. So to uh, um, remove or go out of the edit mode, you hit escape and that's what I did. And then you hit colon W for write and then Q to quit. So you hit that. Uh, I, I know on a lot of my previous video tutorials, I walked through editing configuration files and I performed these steps really fast. And I've received some comments that I do not explain what I am doing in the VI editor. So I try to explain that right here. I do have a video on just basic VI editor commands that I've used throughout my tutorials. So you may want to go check out that VI editor tutorial if that um, helps you. So we've modified our configuration file. We've uh, added the necessary configuration to turn on the authentic basic authentication, authorization, header information to be passed along uh, for our uh, authenticated or protected APIs. Uh, so next thing we need to do is restart Apache web server so these settings can take effect. And for Bitnami, that's a simple command and I will just copy and paste that. Here, we will wait for that to restart. And there we go, that is done. So um, since I just newly created this WordPress instance, I do not have a plugin that requires authenticated APIs, but what we can do is if our configuration was good, um, we our website should still load um, and and here it does. So there is no errors on the configuration. Now, typical plugins or some examples that use authenticated APIs is WooCommerce, uh, Gravity Forms, I, I know that uses uh, authenticated APIs. Once you've turned this on, is go and check and see if you still receive the error. If you do not receive the error, then this has fixed that issue, obviously. But if you continue to receive uh, error messages in your API or your plugin is not working, then I will link down to this post uh, that has quite a bit of information on other ways to resolve the issue. So this person that talks about um, discovery, authentication, they also talk about caching plugins that may be causing issues with your APIs, uh, user agent being blocked, 
Um, and then the WordPress login being redirected to uh, based on the API. So, so I'll link to this post. Um, there's another post from WordPress uh, itself that talks about um, this issue and uh, provides several ways to resolve it. So this one right here, this is the code that we copied from the WordPress uh, site. And then for those of you that use Nginx as your web server, this is the code to copy and paste for your configuration. And then I think there was one more uh, website that, uh, yes, right here. This is a post by a WP Engine engineer that uh, they had similar issues on WP Engine as a hosting platform. And this post talks about um, if you just follow the comments on this post, they have some other alternative options for you to resolve your error. So I will link to all of these down in the uh, blog post on webhostingforbeginners.net. All right, well, I hope you found this video useful and that this tutorial helped resolve your issue. If it did, comment down below and also like the video. Share the video with others so that they benefit from this as well. Uh, if you run into any issues or have any questions, do comment down in the comments below. I'll try my best to answer them. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel if these type of tutorials are of interest to you. Towards the end of this video, you will find some links to playlists and other videos that I've done on the channel. And so be sure to check those out. And um, until the next time, take care.